Last time the Star Wars Chronicles the Prophesied King. The third trial has begun. They made their introduction with the Shadow King, who after having a brief moment with Terry, which didn't end in a, in a good way, they decided to begin their battle. Though Shadow King's magic proved to be too much for mo our heroes, they managed to beat him in his base form. However, that was only the half of the battle, as the Shadow King went into Astaroth form to easily try to take care of them. Daz and Tufiri came into the battle, this time with a different mindset as he decides to kill his father not for the sake of hatred, but for the sake of putting him out of his misery. With all that being said, he still proved to be too much for our heroes. Daz and Mikey went to his own limit break, and he decided to take out the Shadow King by himself. However, despite taking him out of his Astra form, the veil was too much for him as he lost the battle. Though after losing the battle, he did manage to complete the third trial, and also get saved by Fury by the last seconds. Now that is all said and done, Fury and Darkie kill the Shadow King off for good, and that puts an end to the third trial to get all together. Episode 23. What's new? We are back at Francisco's lab. Another year has passed since the last trial. And has seen a bit of a model as the team has changed from 4 to 8 with the addition of Terry, Sierra, and newly added to the team Dragno and Drapier. The scene is within Dragno's room where he seems to be writing something. He hears a knock on his door. Come in! It opens the radio Drapier come in with an eager face. Hurry up, man. We're gonna be you're gonna miss the Beyond State training with Mikey. He notices Dragno writing letter. What are you doing? Oh, this! It's just my delete exercise that Francisco gave me. I've been doing it for quite a while, as he said it's a great way to release stress. I'll be on in a minute. Drapier looked at him weirdly, but he nods nervous, standing as he goes to leave. Alright, don't be too long. He closes the door to leave the dragon to his thing. Dragon takes a deep breath as he goes back to his letter. Log date. Judas 16th, 1997. I know it's been a while. It's me speaking, obviously. Nothing these past 16 years have been quite challenging for all of us. But don't fret. Everything is gonna be alright. I've been doing quite well, thanks to meeting this Drapier guy. The scene cuts the back guy where Drapier was working with Mikey. Mikey seemed to be a little older while now wearing a black undershirt. He also seemed to be focused as he tried to keep a hold of his beyond state. His white veil remains steady. Good. You see a lot more focus than last time we're doing this. Mine gives him a confident look. Thanks. Yeah, I still feel so far away from my goal. You don't let it go for a bit, but it's like you leave your mom say, one step at a time. He chuckles as he tries again. Ever since Starkus came back from his third trial in Romania, I drew him and his crew to Drapier. The dragon already knew the stakes, so it was easy to catch up to speed as with everyone else. Though no one has that close bond with him, he does know how to liven up the place. He has made for a great teacher, as Emblem, Sodicus, and I practice getting better with our Beyond forms. Emblem has already finished, and so has Royalty, has some catching up to do. Dragono looks at the window to see a couple of burglars run away from two weird individuals. It was Cody in his Eagle Man outfit, and a Fury outpaid his Eagle Man, eager to stop them, I'll be a little too excited to do so. There's a plan of running, it won't stop your ass from being toasted! Terry showed through a reflection. I think we should really be fo more focused on the money than the people. Fury didn't listen as it kept going. I agree with him, especially if you're going way too fast! Dragon will laugh as he saw that happening, though he had no idea what they were talking about. The demon guy found new resolve. After seeing that evil dude save civilians all the time, he thought it was a good idea to join him during the missions. It's important to note that even after eight months of doing it, he still has a way to go. Both of them, really. But I think it's a step in the right direction. The demon guy and I form a nice bond, too. Though it's clear that he's a lot friendlier than how he first was. Dragon Oath didn't hurt yelling from downstairs. Francisco seemed to be angry with Sierra messing up with some of the chemicals. It would appear to have blown up. I told you to mix the blue chemical with the red one, not yellow. Are you trying to blow up my lab? Sierra gives him a concerned look. I don't think this lab work is cut out for me. The blue hair lady is struggling to find her place in life. Over the years, she's trying different things, but so far, no luck. Just recently, she tried to be a biologist despite the fact her teacher is busy with something else. The scientist in question is building their transport to Starvania where we hope to turn the tides of war. He's almost there, give it a few more moments. He then looks down to see Drapier and Maggie take a break as they get out of the building. There was also David taking the smoke on the side of the door as well. Maggie ran off to the cafe right by, right by there. Drapier also took notes of David. What you doing out here, buddy? David took his cigarette out and thought. Oh, nothing. Just lamenting, that's all. 
lamenting about what? Jerry looks over to see Mikey and Sora tie each other at the cafe near them. Naaman gives gave a careful tear. They grow up so fast, don't they? Draper gets a weird look. Starkus might have found this match. Him and the girl I insulted in the past have grown an unbreakable bond. The biker can hardly believe it. But I think it suits them. To be honest, he probably wouldn't be this emotional about it if he himself didn't keep getting love letters from a certain someone. I won't tell him, as I promise his secret admirer will remain as a secret. He gives a gleeful laugh, it's right to that. It's so surreal to me that a year has gone by since we formed as a team. And it helps a lot seeing how Team Magnum and the Anto guy have been rather quiet during this time. And it's only a matter of time for the fight with the wizard, who himself remains quiet. It won't be easy, rest assured that we'll pull through. Ready off, King H.R. Dragon of the Fourth. He puts the letter into an envelope and gets up from his chair. After taking a deep breath, he walks out to the room with a letter in his hand. Once they head downstairs, they see Mikey and Sora return with a gleeful looks. He gives him all his own laugh as he sees them do the same. Good to see you return! The couple took notice. Yeah, we saw a man have an outburst at the cafe. He obviously wanted a sandwich, but he hated it for having too much bread. It was so trivial. I bet it was. Drippier walks while patting their backs. Hey, never question the lakes of a man's resolve to get the perfect sandwich. One day you'll find that'll be a greater quest than saving Starvania itself. They laugh at his non-serious tone. Oh, stop it. We should probably get back to training. Sora holds on to him before he follows. Come on, just a few more minutes. Mikey kisses her on the cheek. It won't be that much longer. You can join if you want. Draper then pushes him aside to take a look at her. You are close, yet you lack the component to push yourself further. What you need is a reason to break those limits. Like what? Draper shrugs in confusion. I don't know. The only thing I'm good at is helping people master it. Breaking isn't our story entirely. Sora so nods in confidence. Well, if Mikey and Dragon Knock can do it, I don't see why I can't. Drapier gave his own back. That's the attitude. Until then, he saw he heard another explosion. They turn around and see Francisco push Sierra out of the lab. That's it! I am at my wits end about this! I'm sorry, I don't know what you expected from me. Well, I don't know either, but I do know one thing, is that this is losing make me lose every sense of sanity I have. It's bad enough that you guys keep pestering my work. And I'm so backed up with it that it's actually driving me nuts. If one more stupid event happens the next moment, he hears a doorbell ring. Mike is over to see who it is. After opening it, he sees Data push Anto back. No, uh-uh. You ain't getting in here. Anto gave an annoyed look. I already told you it's temporary. Anto looks over to see a door open. He also sees the anti tin give out a plate of cookies. Please accept my token of delicious snacks to celebrate our temporary truce. Maya looks down confused. Francisco comes over more annoyed. Now the what? It took him over calmly. Alright, I don't like doing this as much as you do, but it's my only option. This past year has been rough for me. After my previous fight with you guys, I tried to learn more about these watches. However... He holds a robotic arm out to show that his watches are short-circuiting. It would appear that whatever power I use is almost washed up. There's still enough for individual use, but it's clear that repairs are required, and unfortunately without the full capabilities of it, I can't do jack shit at the moment, so I've come here to form a truce. Chris will look down at it and then back at him. Are you stupid? You made me. What was that? Nothing, just accept it. It took me a couple weeks to come to terms with it. Uh, anti tank comes over with a remark. Actually, sir, it took you five months. Anto punches his head. Long enough to come to terms with it. So, do we have an understanding? Well, he comes in front of him to shake his hand. Yeah, whatever, just let us know when you're planted in this truce. No promises. But with that being said, I'm moving in. Times are hard. Anto remains himself inside unamused. Absolute nut. You get out of my house. Or what? You kick me out? I'll just come back when you least expect it. Regardless, I'll just be upstairs trying to figure out how to make money. It's like I won't even be here. Which in some cases, this is a good thing, as it gives me the element of surprise. Until the marches upstairs, the others are left confused with the situation. 
So is anyone going to stop him or? Yeah, what's the worst he can do? Kill us in our sleep. If he's gonna be here, we need a full lockdown on him. Which means more work for me to do. Ten! Fisco comes back into his lab. Well, while that's happening, let's get back to training. Another knock came to the door. Great. That better not be one more person. This is the lab, not a goddamn hotel. Sword this time goes over a check. Yeah, she was less shocked to see who th they were. Hi, would you like to speak to our daughter, Sora Peters? Mom? Dad? The scene then cuts the Fury chain up a couple of burglars with his chain. Yeah, that would teach you from stealing millions! The reflection of Terry Lock looked down and taunted them. Was it really necessary to give them a third degree burns in the process? First of all, it's second degree burns. He saw us talking as quick as up. Not bad. Remember when we talked about not giving people third degree burns? Fury gave him a shock look. The police arrived as they apprehend the criminals. You must thank you again, evil man. You know, we have to ask you about your friend over there. He points over the Fury, taunting the criminals in the car. I understand he's still not the best at this, but trust me, he will. We're not sure if he's a safe person to do this. Don't get us wrong, I mean, more superheroes in charge is great, but we would like if our heroes had more. Oh, how he put this nicely. I'll ask sign to hinge. I've been trying, believe me. Fury walks over after hearing the conversation unamused. Well, excuse me for helping you guys out. I could have said no and let you be, yet here I am. The police shook his head suddenly. Cody decided to take action as he was talking. He takes Fury's arm as he walks away. I'll see to it, and as always, as long as I live, you will not fear evil or whatever. The scene then cuts to Cody and Terry taking drinks by a cafe. At this point, Cody has Eagle Man suit off, and he's back as normal attire. Let me to apologize for my ego's behavior. Cody just stared at his drink, unsure what to do. Bird? I'm starting to think that he isn't really cut out for this. Fury appeared within the drink reflection. What do you mean? Are you talking about today? Cody gives him an annoyed look. Oh, today wasn't each bad, but most of the time at the time you burn a guy to a crisp. At the time you thought you saved the person by throwing him off the building. By the time you made all those kids uncrumble with your tricks during the brink heist. Okay, you have a point, but don't forget the time I saved people from that fire. You mean the fire you caused? Fury hushed away without saying a word. Let me speak to my brother that he's trying his best. It's just that he isn't good at it. Cody gives out a sigh. I understand that, but we've been at this for a long time. I remember correctly, when you asked me that he should learn from me how to be a better person, I told you I was the worst person for you to turn to. Being a hero is one thing, being a decent person is another. Your brother fails at both categories, and the only reason I went along with it is because you will teach each other along the way. Well, here we are eight months later, and nothing has changed. You would at least suspect that some steps to prove what happened, but we never left square one. Fury came back at again. Well, if it's so easy, then how do you do it? Toy takes a look at an older kid defending a younger kid from several goalies. As a hero, it's your job to not only protect the people, but also be a good role model. Dave and the others helped me learn that through training. People look up to you, and many will inspire to be just like you. And when they grow up and try to be that person, what do you want them to turn into? Simply put, being a good person isn't always defeating the bad guy. Why do you think Mikey's trying so hard to learn to be the best leader? It's such a silently as they always run away from the oldest kid for getting a swift punch to the biggest one. Once that was done, he reached in the other kid, saying it was going to be okay. That's how I try to do it. I might not be the best. Hell, sometimes I can be the worst. But that doesn't stop me from doing it. I still don't quite get it. He didn't hear from a nearby radio there was trouble happening from the east side of the city. Cody gets up to the Now I recommend you stay here and think about it. I got a job to do. Cody rushes into the building and get ready. Now he head back to most of the other game gathering in one place at Francisco's dining room. Mikey and Sora sat across from their parents, when, who seemed gleeful to be there. Sora, on the other hand, did not. Sierra comes up with the food and ready to along with Francisco. And good to say, this is the first time I've ever seen some of my employees come to you with me. I assume you aren't staying for long? Oh, of course not. Just here to see how our little girl's doing. Sora looked grew more intense. Sierra goes over to sit by David and the rest are a little nervous. She leans over to him with a thought. This is probably the angriest I've ever seen Sora. Me too. Though she does have the right to be. 
Sora has her arm crossed as she looks at them intensely. So, Mom, how's life? Just wonderful. Ever since we heard you saved the city from an awful, awful anto, we just had to see you. I heard that. You don't look up at the ceiling confused. I bet you did, seeing how that was two years ago. Well, we've been busy. As Francisco, we've been trying to pay off a lot of our debts during those times. Not only that, but we tried last year, but that's when we heard you went all the way to Romania for some bizarre reason. I was helping my boyfriend. The parents look over to Mikey, who didn't seem sure when to budge in. He awkwardly waves while giving her a smile, trying to provoke anything. Sullivan gets up like angered. Young man, for what reason did you have for kidnapping our daughter? Sora gets up angered as well. He didn't force me, Dad. I went there by choice. Her dad was taken aback at hearing that. Besides, when was the last time you cared about my well-being? I've been away for almost four years now, and you haven't noticed a thing. I bet you don't even know that I dropped out of school or haven't been to school, period. She decided to sit back down, trying to calm herself down. Mikey comforted her through that. Look, Thor, darling, we were honestly scared about your ability. You weren't the first in our family to have it. It drove my grandfather insane, and we assumed the same would happen to you. Obviously, we didn't handle it the best way. Her mom and dad had whole hands while giving her a calm look. But if you give us the chance, we will do a better job as your parents. They both smiled at saw Sora, who was still disgusted. She excused herself as she kept to her thoughts. Maggie tried to follow, but Sierra waved him off as she did instead. So, do you know anything about the Trailblazers? They had kept the conversation going as Sora sits in the other room. Sierra walks in to see her conflicted. You doing good, sis? Sora acknowledges her arrival and goes back into her thoughts. Sierra comes up to sit by her. Probably not the first thing you thought you saw today, huh? Sora didn't respond. I know how you feel. It's like I did with, with my brother last year. Of course, that was a different circumstance, but it's kind of the same thing. Sierra still knows that Sora wasn't responsive. Okay, here's the bottom line. I think you should give them another shot. Yeah, so they can neglect me again and start this whole process over. Hold on, we don't know that for sure. Sora gets thicker in front of her. You honestly think I should give them a shot? They never wanted to be part of my life. And look where I'm at now, more comfortable than I ever was. I don't need them to ruin it. But what if they don't ruin it? What if they truly do want to make amends? You said before they figured out that you had powers. They were as kind as any good set of parents were. All, if not most of us here, don't have that. You should at least give them an honest chance. Sora goes back into her thoughts. And look at it this way. If they turn out to be just as douchey as before, then you can just leave them again. It's their loss. Sora shook her head in understanding. I suppose that's fair. All right. I'll trust your judgment on this. Sora gives out to do just that. Sierra gives a confident look as she goes, Caesar goes out. David finishes the conversation with the parents looking uncomfortable. They see Sora standing there determined. Tomorrow, we will go on a family outing, and you better be the parents I want you to be. They both got to give her a hug. Don't worry, we promise to be better. That's right, darling. Sora didn't hug them back. They just take their leave of waiting goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Stay safe. You guys too. At our closing door, they heard someone say in the stairwell. Trusting them that easily, huh? They turn around to see Anto stand there confidently. Before you say anything... I know what I said earlier, but here's the thing. This thing you're doing rather intrigues me. Giving them a second chance like that, you know you're only setting yourself up for failure. So I love them with a certain face. So they're my parents at the end of the day. I'd rather them be here for me at one point in my life than never be here at all. And tell us for a slick grin. Sure, whatever you tell yourself. Just know that when they do neglect you. Remember that I told you so. Into gets a cocky laugh as he goes upstairs. What is that guy's deal? Sora just stares at him laughing. Tomorrow came as expected. Cody was patrolling the area in his Eagle Man outfit as Fury fell behind. Are you sure you got a grasp of it this time? Fury looks back at him confident. 
Of course I do. You seriously don't trust me? Coke gives them an unused look. As they were disgusted, they see another robbery take place in the building below. The alarm ran all throughout the city as the two look, took a notice. Just don't fuck it up, please? Cody glides down to follow the getaway car. Fury follows soon after. I got this. As the burglars try to get away, they see Cody glide towards them. Great, it's that bird dude. Shoot him out of the sky, man. He tried, but the bullets bounce off the suit. Really? When will you criminals learn that I'm immune to stupidity? Koei Eagle dives into the motor of the car. With enough force, he smashes it to the stop the car. Both burglars got out to confront him. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. If you got your bones, I recommend the easy way. The burglars head out their guns determined. Yeah, right, let me loose you, bird brain. <laughs> Gee, never heard of that one before. The two thieves didn't feel the fire chain behind them, and they were yanking far behind. Fury gives a position to shoot fire in, his, in their face. That's right, baby! Feel the burn, you piece of shit! Fury! And she just quickly walk over to him frustrated. You couldn't contain yourself for five seconds, could you? Fury, Fury lets him go half dead. I stopped the bad guys, didn't I? Cody looked behind him, unchanging. That depends on your definition of a bad guy. Fury looks over to see the few civilians with a white and fear. I forgot not the conversation we had the other day. Kelly shakes his head in frustration. I'm sorry, Fury, but that's my last straw. I can't take any more. Go home. Please give her a chance. Go home! Cody points furiously at him. Fury gives an unamused look as he walks away. As he manages to get out of sight, he slams his fist hard against one of the buildings. He growls in anger while looking at his reflection. Terry takes form through it. I said that went rather well. Shut up. Fury continues to growl to himself. How many people have you burned already? I count at least a few hundred. You're not helping. Tyri takes a sigh of annoyance. What, what's our plan now? You said being the hero could help you be a better person. Tyri was less silent as he had no idea. He didn't feel as Terry hold on to his hand. I know you'll get there one day. No, Terry, he's right. I'm not cut out for this. I couldn't be a good person no matter how hard I try. Fury lets some tears go. I should just go deep down your subconscious and let you take over the rest of the way. Fury. Terry gives him a concerned look. Fury tries to contain himself, which gives him enough time to notice the thing from a distance. He hears a weird voice come from the alleyway. He goes over to investigate. Inside the place, he hears a voice that awfully sounds like Pearson in there. I see you two convinced your daughter to join you. He didn't hear a male voice, but not one that is familiar. Indeed, our end of the bargain has been fulfilled. Now give us a safe patch we agree to. Now hold on. Until she's dead, we aren't doing anything. Besides, you still have not allowed her to me. Once you do, I'll have Dark Knight take you far away from here. Do you understand? The two individuals nodded. Good. Take her to the mall. They walk out to the other side of the pierce and get this confident smile. Fury watches him do that, and Pearson looks over to where Fury is, confidently smiling. I know you're there. If you want to be the person you want to be, then I suggest you try to stop me. Pearson uses his metal claws to swing away. Fury stands circumvented at hearing that. That sounds like a trap. We probably, not, probably shouldn't get involved. Fury? He didn't listen as he chased after him. Fury, don't. We now go back to Sora being with her parents, the mall. Sierra and David were also there, kept keeping an eye to see if everything was going well. Her parents helped her pick out some new outfits, as she seemed to be pretty happy all the same. I'm going well so far. Good. Though I don't know why we're bothering her personal business. If she wasn't a capable fighter, I get it, but she should be fine. Sierra looks back to him sternly. I just want to make sure she's okay. I have this feeling something might go wrong. You then see Fury rush in. He notices the two there and stops frantically. Hey, I, you haven't seen that Pearson guy around here, have you? Why, is there a problem? I'm not sure who, but he, some girl is going to be attacked by him. He wants her dinner for some reason, so I had to stop him before he does that. The two get up as well. What girl? Where is he coming from? We don't have time to think. Let's go around and be prepared for survival. They, they nod as he had their separate ways. Meanwhile, Sora left one store with her parents with a new pink and yellow tank top on. She seemed to be having the time of her life with them. Calm down, our little superhero. You're getting a little too excited. Sora turns back to him gleefully. Are you kidding? I've been wanting to have this moment for a long time. When was the last time the three of us just hung out together? 
Her parents came up comfortingly. Yes, I'll admit it's been a while. How about we get some food from the food court? Sounds good to me. She lets them lead the way as she keeps her smile going. Though on the outside she was happy, on the inside it was a different story. Alright, when's the moment they turn their backs on me? They arrive at the food court after getting their lunch. As they ate, they caught up with each other. And after that, we defeated the old wizard dude to win the third trial. Yet, we still don't know anything about the fourth one. I see. There was some pretty exciting adventures to go on. Sarah sheds a tear in joy. Just think about it, Sully. Our little darling has grown up so much without us. How horrible of parents we must be not to be there for her. I know, sweetie. Which is why we really want to make up to you. He brings out present for her. Sarah looks at confused. She takes it. Go ahead. Open it. It's something your mother and I worked all night. Sora opened it and held her gas as she saw it. For it was a well-drawn picture for and her parents together with the biggest smile. She was less speechless of this present. After a few moments of staring at it, she looks up to see her parents disappeared. In fact, they seem to be quietly running to the door. Wait, where are you? She hears a glass window break above her to have Pearson drop down unexpectedly. He wasted no time and grabbed her neck by surprise. She grabs onto it while gasping for air. Miss me? Where are your other friends at? Sora used one of her light beams to try and blind him, causing him to let go. Not here. What do you want? Sora gets in a bow stance. I'm just curious about something, that's all. He then goes over and swings in her direction. Sora dodges while dashing toward her door. Pearson quietly chuckles as she does. That's right. Run. On the other side of the store, people were running away from the scene. Here he saw Walt wandering. He looks like a person. Sir! Worry, what's going on? The guy panicked even further seeing him. He rushed away as Fury doesn't bother him further. But on Visk in the scene, he sees Pierce in the distance attacking someone. He also took notice of some of the kids being stuck under on a table. Is he attacking those kids? Why bother? Terry's voice came into his thoughts. It's not the kid he's attacking. Look closer. He does so see Pierce and give chase to Sora. Why is she doing here? We'll figure it out later. We need to save them. Fury launches himself with the crowd and chased down the metalhead. Pearson tried to reach for him with her with a claw, but Fury Chain prevented him from doing so. Pearson looked back confidently. So you came after all. He tucks on the chain to bring Fury over to him. With a swift punch, he sits the demon flying to the ground. Before he lands another attack, Fury summoned fire to block off his punches. He gets up to face him. You'll leave those poor people alone, you got that? Not till I get what I want, you hear me? Terry showed up in one of the glass reflections. Let's hear him out what he wants. It can be preschool to man. Fury nods, he goes up to him. Okay, what do you want with that girl? It's not your concern, demon. Fury looked at him furiously. Is that so? You're attacking this in person. I think that's worth my concern. Pearson looked down his guard a bit. If you persist, then I guess I'll humor you. Sora rushes to see her parents talk with Darkna on the outskirts of the mall. We did it. Get us out now. They seem stressed. What are you doing? Look over and see Sora annoyed. Uh, oh, darling, we were just getting us a way out of here. Sora sighed in frustration. I figured it was going to be like this. You know, for a moment I almost thought you had me there with that painting. But I guess some things weren't meant to be. She walks away from the upset, yet calm. Which you aren't mad at us? Sora looks back at them unfetchingly. Why well, waste my breath on people like you? You never cared about me, and you never will. I think all of us here have had enough of that. So go ahead, leave. I was fine by myself anyway. Sora rushes all to try and get back in the fight. Selvin goes up to her after telling us what to say there. Sora. She looks back and unhappy. Now what? Sullivan remained silent as he looked at her. If that's how it's going to be, let me be honest with you. Yeah, we never really cared. The only reason we did this is because that Pearson guy promised us a safe voyage away from here. And why is that? The scene cut out to Pearson and Fury. The thing is, I have something special planned for all of you. Something grander than whatever you've faced before. It would require a few things, like a few distractions. Fury crosses his arms. Distractions? Really? Come now. Why did you think the crime rate skyrocketed in the past year? We need to keep you guys busy as you worked our plan from the background. The only reason why I'm even telling you this is because we almost have it complete. Okay, what does that have to do with Sora? Pearson gets in a cocky smirk. The scene then cuts back to Sora and Sullivan. 
He needs a personal fit as his test subject, whatever that is. And his first thought was you because he thinks you are the easiest to kill with an ability. Sora seems shocked with his realization. I, I don't believe him, but if that doesn't work, he threatens both the whole city with us in it. In exchange for our safety, we have no choice but to comply. Sora seemed furious with that statement. That is stupid! How dare he think that of me! Why wouldn't he kill me in my sleep? She feels a claw scrape her side. I needed a place where there was a crab without your friends to protect you. Yet, I seem to have misjudged the paranoia of some of them. Looks over to see Fury get out from the attack he received. As he was, as he was, he saw a frying kitchen on her table. He then looks over to Pearson trying to put the finishing blow on Sora, who was struggling. We need to go help her. Fury remained unwilling to move as his mind was torn. This is an easy decision to make. Save her. Pearson was ready to put the final blow and with each claw putting pressure. Don't fear, Sora. Soon you'll be a part of something much larger than this. She was still struggling, fearing that this was it. But she looks over to see not only her their mother surprised Darkna by tackling him, but her father trying to push Pearson away. He notices unmused. What are you doing, Sullivan? We had a deal. I don't care anymore. Pearson looks at him strangely. Keep fighting, Sora, you can beat him. Pearson turns around and scratches him deep. Give it a rest. He seems she seems surprised. With that event, she spots a lot of light around her as she flashes red. Now, where were... He sees her flash red as well. As she goes completely red while spawning a giant light beam from her hand. This sends Pearson back. Fury notices as well, with a sour leak rush over the kids. They seem to be back, take it back away from him, but he stood there with a smile. It's okay, I'm here to help. After a while, one of them is brave enough to take his hand. Fury helps him out and goes for the others. One by one, he helps each of them out while, while helping them go their way. Let's go find our caretakers. Everything's gonna be fine. He looks down to see Sora and her red veil stand confidently in front of Pearson. He didn't know what to do as he saw three of their claws destroyed. Damn, not again. He looks at her furiously and decides to run away. You win today, but I'll get what I want, one way or another. He leans as Sora drops the red veil, almost passing out in the process. But she was helped by her mother. Is it over? Her mom gives her a hug. A few days later, Dragna was back at his desk writing something in his journal. Log date, June 20th, 1997. It's, it's me again, like it would have been anyone else. So Pierce has done it. Means she can train along with us. She still has a way to go in her training, but she's making excellent progress. Unfortunately for her, despite what her parents did, she could not reconcile at the end. But at least they ended the discussion on peaceful terms rather than, well, anything else. Her father will make the recovery, and they promise never to see each other again. Which ends that. Meanwhile, the fiery guy made quite an impression over the past few days. Though Cody doesn't trust him, he can finally see some progress coming from the demon. It's at least the point where he's allowing him to come back on missions. Take a deep breath out of the rain, that. Team Madden is back this time, and as, a t as leader talks about some sort of project they're working on. It could be a full trial for all we know, but we have to be careful around them. There's no telling what they could do. I hope nothing terrible comes from this. The scene cuts to Pearson in the lab lot with the rest of the numbers. So, I'm beginning to think that Sorgo might not be the best candidate for a little science project. Pearson finishes remaking his claws. I suppose not. But there does have to be someone out there we can easily take advantage of. Joe came over the book. I think what she means is that the human can't take the role of the beast. I mean, it has to be something else. Pearson takes the book for himself to investigate. He reads while thinking out loud. Something else.